So I studied PR and journalism in college. And I think the exciting thing about studying communications and journalism is that there are so many different paths you can go in. After spending some time in the music and entertainment industry, uh, in marketing and in journalism, uh, I had the opportunity to intern actually at Retail Touchpoints. Uh, initially, I didn't think I would be in B2B trade, but I started to realize that as a consumer, I had a very unique perspective to bring into the very traditional and let's face it, sometimes old school um, world of B2B publishing. And retail was at this really exciting job show. It was around 2011. So we really started to see the rise of uh, flash sale sites, couponing sites, social media. Um, and it just gave me this light bulb moment that I had the chance to really participate in an exciting evolution of the industry. And I think that really ties to what I find so exciting and rewarding about being involved in the retail industry is that retail is so embedded in everything we do as humans. It drives civilization. It drives progress in technology. And everything we do, who we interact with, the technology we use every day, even the cultures and communities that we belong to, it all impacts what we buy, where, the brands that we're loyal to. And it's this really interesting intersection of behavioral psychology and just traditional psychology, right? The mo emotional and, and mental aspects of it all. So being able to not just focus on what's happening in the news and um, how retailers are progressing in this new area, but getting into the why of it all and helping executives adapt their strategies and find new ways to innovate. That's really what's most rewarding to me. So for this holiday season, I feel like it's a very interesting year because we saw several years of very significant growth, especially through e-commerce. But now we're starting to see a bit of uh, stabilization, I guess you could say. We're not seeing as much of an increase, so I think some people are a bit worried, but looking at the year-over-year -year trend line, especially pre-COVID, let's face it, COVID was a bit of a uh, very unique circumstance, and that's why we saw such growth through e-commerce, um, it's still growth. And I think that was really the big takeaway that I heard from a lot of our sources, a lot of experts in the field that look at this data, is that progress is still happening. Um, in some instances, especially through e-commerce on a global scale, uh, it seems like the growth is, um, I guess, a bit stagnant, but I think there are so many other factors at play that we need to take into account. So the one biggest factor is navigating inflation, right? Uh, retail businesses need to understand what's happening at a macro level, uh, especially for the consumer. The consumer is navigating increasing prices, especially through grocery, cost of living realities, um, and also the realities of the job climate, right? Uh, the consumer is going through so much and really trying to get their footing, like how they're spending, how they can be more savvy in their spending. So there are a few dynamics at play here. And um, I think for the holidays especially, we're going to be keeping a very close watch on which categories are really seeing demand and seeing that increase and which maybe consumers are pulling back on uh, a little bit. Uh, we, we saw some new data um, through our research, our uh, annual personalization and loyalty research that retail executives know that this is something that they need to keep watch on, right? Um, the navigation of inflation uh, was a top concern for them. They said that this was a pressure impacting their approach to customer loyalty and personalized customer experiences, and that there are some other factors too around their supply chain and navigating that push and pull of demand that they're trying to keep their, their eyes on. Um, granted, that research happened in the summer, but I think it was just a long-term, long-tail uh, narrative point through 2023 as a whole. Yeah, so I definitely think from a supply chain perspective, in general, brands and retailers are still trying to figure out consumer behaviors, right? And I think during the holidays, especially, uh, it, it's kind of 
up in the air, right? Um, I know Prime Day sometimes gives us a pretty good indication as far as where the discretionary spend is going. Uh, but there are also other factors at play, like are people returning to work? Uh, back to school, like what are people spending on? So I think in general, retailers and brands of all sizes, even the small businesses, need to kind of use the tools at their disposal and especially the the data that, that they have about their consumers to gauge, you know, where, where are the trending patterns? What are consumers searching for? Uh, that'll probably give them a bit of a clue into, you know, what consumers are thinking, you know, where their wallet share may be going, especially as we get into the holiday season. But I think holiday supply and demand is a completely different uh, baseline because there there are so many marketing opportunities tied around that, like, uh, you know, hot gifts, uh, curated wish lists, things of that nature. Um, but it, it's definitely been an interesting time to see, you know, where the push and pull is, what categories are, are seeing that increase. I think in general, we, we have seen consistent demand around, you know, sport, um, you know, athletic wear, uh, sneakers, I think are going to be a really uh, big category. Um, whereas uh, luxury, I think is relatively stable, for instance. So it, it really depends at, at a category level. Yeah, so I think there are a few different uh, methods that brands and retailers can use. It does depend on on the size and how much budget I think a retailer has uh, to support their tech stack. We have seen a lot of movement around the integration between uh, uh, CRM and ERP, POS, a lot of acronyms there. But really, the goal is to be able to connect what consumer is buying what and where and being able to get that comprehensive view of purchases across all channels, whether it's just in store, uh, online as well, even through marketplaces. So I think being able to connect those dots uh, is really critical. Um, however, it's even just looking into, uh, you know, data analytics through social listening, through just going through the comment section, right? Or going into TikTok and seeing what's trending. Granted, that's not as granular and as business specific as, say, an ERP system or CRM, um, but that allows you to at least get that high level insight into your community, what they're saying, what they're buying, and um, even embracing you know, free tools like the, the survey and polling feature and in Instagram, like that kind of gives you a, a quick insight, nugget of insight that you can leverage um, in, in a lot of different ways. So I think in general, and this isn't just small businesses, I think this is all retailers. Um, I think the biggest pitfall is getting so stuck in the short-term wins of the holiday season. Granted, I know consumers are kind of in a different mindset over the holidays. They're largely shopping for others. They have a very set list, especially this year. They may be a bit more strict in terms of what they're buying and for whom. Um, so I know the gut instinct is to say, let's get that conversion no matter what. Let's focus on promotions. And I will say at a high level, a lot of the research that we've been seeing indicates that consumers are going to be a bit more savvier. They are focusing on price comparison. They're hunting for promotions. And that's going to be a season-long reality. Um, however, any way that you can go beyond that and think through the collective experience that the consumer will have with your brand will be beneficial for long-term retention and growth. We've been seeing so much uh, commentary around rising customer acquisition rates, especially online through uh, advertising channels like Meta. Um, so now's the time for brands to think more creatively about how they're not just going to get that immediate conversion, but bring consumers into that long tail journey to immerse them into the brand. And that's where during the holiday season, especially, I think there's a really unique opportunity to leverage your community, to even use your employees as your community, right? Like that's kind of that, that top down perspective into 
um, you know, how to throw the perfect, you know, holiday gathering or things to buy for X person in your life, right? And I think now more than ever that that intersection between content and commerce is very present, especially through social media, of course. So brands need to think about what they're going to say to their new consumers to to capture their attention in the short term, get that wallet share, but also realize, hey, like there's actually more to this brand than this one thing that I need to buy. So let me stay engaged with them. Let me see possibly what I can buy from them in the future. Because let's face it, more often than not, if a person likes what they see from a brand, they're more likely to buy something for themselves, uh, not just the person on their wish list. So in short, think long-term strategy, even through the holidays, not just getting that short-term win. I would say the next thing um, that you know, I think a lot of brands and retailers need to focus on, I think we've seen a lot of progress um, in the 2022 season is, uh, you know, be transparent around deadlines. This was a big pitfall, I think, during the peak of the pandemic, just because retailers didn't know where consumers' heads were at, what behaviors were going to be taking place. But know from the get-go what your holiday calendar looks like, what the deadlines will be for delivery and, you know, some of the shipping dynamics that are happening and communicate those deadlines extensively as early as possible because consumers, again, are going to be hunting for the best deals, maybe playing a little bit of chicken with you, right, to see if there's going to be a better deal that rolls around, um, which can lead to them waiting longer and longer through the season to make that final purchase. But you don't want that to happen if there's no way they're going to get that gift in time. So again, be transparent, communicate often what those deadlines are, and be sure to be responsive if there are questions, concerns, even complaints among your consumers. 